This is a welded hull Grant, one of approximately 18 that served with the Australian Army during World War II. It was partially restored by an enthusiast, but the project was abandoned for many years until it was acquired by the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. In the last episode, we inspected the final drive units and found them to be in nearly perfect condition. This week, Daryl will start on the idler wheels, Jesse will begin work on the rear decks, and Ryan will inspect the differential and gearbox. We've got a lot to get on with, so sit back, relax, and enjoy episode three of the Welded Hull Grant Restoration. Right, what about this one, Daz? Well, this this has been uh, this has been used as a farm vehicle after the war, so you can see how badly damaged this uh, rear roller is. It might have got a rock stuck between the tracks or something. We just don't know. You know? It's had a hard life, put it that way. But the other problem is, is when we took this in to get it sandblasted, we didn't really realise how much damage is on the other one. Oh, the other one was all right. So did we until we got it back from the sandblasters. When we got it back, we didn't realise how much rust was in it. You can see here that it's still got flaky rust that didn't come out and they're right through. And because this takes a lot of pressure of the track, you know, we don't want anything to go wrong. Rightio, here's the other return roller. This is farm fresh. You can't get any fresher than this. We've got to spend a couple of hours tidying this up, cleaning this, get rid of all the grease and the dirt out of it. And when we pulled it off, the bearings were in quite good condition, so we'll tidy these bearings up and have a look at them and uh, repack them and they're probably good to go for what we want to do. If this part was from an international supplier, there's no way we would have received it this dirty. Australian quarantine is really strict, and rightly so, but everything for this vehicle was acquired locally, so there's a little bit of dirt that we need to get rid of. Some of this stuff's been here a while. One good thing about, you know, grease and that, it might be a mongrel to move, but it's protected the metal a lot of the time, so. Under here is probably going to be beautiful. What's that? There's the reason why the grease was in this area. What is it? There's a grease nipple there that's no longer in there. So it's obviously been sitting for a long time in the heat. The grease is just dripped out of the grease nipple. Makes you wonder how they get damaged in there, but you can see the shape's flattened out. So I hope we can get that seal out. That's a seal there. And uh, we've got to try and get new seals for it as well. So we'll go to our suppliers and see what they can get us. Pretty good in here. So. Slip down. As you can see, bearings look pretty good. Who made them? What do you got there? Oh, this one. That's good. That's the, the model number of the bearing. If we have to re replace them. But just judging from that, they look pretty good. Apart from the, the grease is just a bit, 
old and that, that should come up nicely. Ryan is managing the mechanical aspect of the restoration, so Daryl brings him in to make sure he's happy with the condition of this wheel. Have a look at the size of the bearing on the other side, see the depth of it? Yeah. You might find you press the bearing down that way. Yep. Um, and then the seal come out. So this is obviously against the hull this side. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, well yeah. yeah, up against the uh, Yeah the on the hull side isn't yeah, it? That's yeah. where the nut goes on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, keep keep going. You must be able to take this uh, ring out and pull these balls out yeah. and, and pull the bearing apart. It's, it's, a, big, it's a chunky bearing. Yeah, Considering yeah. there's another one as well. Yeah. But then you think about all the weight of all that crap oh, yeah. going around. Huh? Yeah. We just use it as it is. I mean, it looks in pretty good nick. Well, we can, we can, we can just uh, wash it with some Kero, um, blast it out, and then just look at the balls and just just look and you know in the bearing race and like just look for any fitting or anything like that and we can repack them if you want to run it around i'll clean it inspect it yeah yeah while we're, while we're doing it yeah <laughs> just in case just in case yeah yeah just in case there's one that's got a fail out because if a wheel bearing collapses that whole wheel's going to go like this and yeah. you know, cause issues you know track damage and all sorts of stuff like that so we don't want yeah. that no <laughs> at least they actually come out without too much you know <laughs> so that how easy that came out then that bearing will be fine yeah look there's a yeah. funny looking well, see this one here but like, it's got lifts up what's that is that broke that might be one broken off coming out i'll just give it a couple more hits and have a feel Definitely need a bit of a clean. And then there's our twin oil seals by the way. Oil dust seals. So we're looking to get and we'll clean these up and see if we can get new ones of them. So. <laughs> Cleaned up okay. Can't see any markings on them. We'll take them into our suppliers and just see if they can uh, get them. And if worse comes to worse, these all look pretty good condition. Still a bit more cleaning to do, but for what we need, they might be reusable. Jesse broke his wrist playing soccer a few weeks ago. He's mending well, but he just can't stay away from the So place. I'm going to be working on the rear deck hatches on, the, on our grant. The hinges have been semi-repaired previously and they've been kind of welded on, so not done properly. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to probably um, get up there, get up with a grinder and cut the, cut the existing bolts off and lift the hatches off. We'll just repair them, uh, yep. put them back together and then put them back on the deck. I 
might need to buy these ones off the box here. make some new bolts, some new tapered bolts to go in because we can't use them, we have to cut them off. And same with this hinge over here, you can actually see the uh, bit of round bar that was held in was, was completely sheared off and you can still see it's, uh, the round bars in on both other sides. So we'll have to try and knock them out and again make some more round bar, some new hinges, fix it all up and then put it back together. So the hinges have been like semi welded on so we're really struggling to get them off so because they've been welded from underneath and they're like a hot rivet they're like really wedged in there nice and firm so we're going to try heat them up bright red and punch them through take this off now and I can work on it off would make it easier yeah otherwise it's just yeah just too hard to do it upside down These little brackets are in the way of the last bolt. It wasn't clear what they were for at first, but it looks as though they're a part of the fire extinguisher. The previous owner has welded them onto this little plate. So what are they? It's for the fire extinguisher. It's just obviously that's not how you mount a, a fire extinguisher. That's the only thing I can think of is maybe they push it, push it through and some of the foam comes out. Because this is directly on top of the motors, so. Always easier said 
than done. Every hole's been oxy cut out more. Elon gated out. So is that is that is this an original one? Well, it's, it's an original one, but someone's obviously retro fitted it to, to suit this back. Yeah, you don't know what could have happened. With the it. holes must have just slightly been out. I mean, flip this over now and try and knock this hinge off. It was actually good now because we can actually see you know what's been done to it. So now we just fix that, put the hinge back on and we can bolt it all back on. But what we'll do is we'll probably work on the other side tomorrow, pull that off, and then probably look at pulling the actual top of the, the, the deck off. So when Ryan goes to, you know, look into an engine and that, we can look at how much room we've got, how much space we've got. Ryan and Bo are just finishing up the post Oz Armour Fest Panzer IV and Stug IV servicing. Ryan has his work cut out for him but at least most of the drive unit is already fitted and hopefully in good condition. So we're going to inspect the differential and look for you know, corrosion, that sort of stuff. From looking at the final drives, I, I reckon it's going to be the same. It's going to be in the same condition. Pretty yeah. good neck? Yeah, pretty good neck. So there is like an inspection plate, so it's, which is fairly large, this plate on the side. So I'm thinking we can just unremo remove these bolts, take this cover off, and we should be able to see inside uh, this part of the gearbox, and we can, you know, we give us an idea of the condition of inside. Yeah. Uh, there's the cover there. Let's see if I can get my light to. Oh, that looks good. I'll turn it over. Let's we'll see. So, and this feels really good too. It's it's nice and smooth. Um, there's no, there's no tight spots. There's a little bit of surface rust here, but it hasn't compromised the case hardening and should clear up once it's oiled up and running. somewhere down here, he has a little lever, push that lever down, push it on this rod, it lifts this up and that allows you to, to um, pull, pull, it, pull it back which will pull on to reverse gear. So it looks really good, the gearbox looks awesome, the differential looks awesome. Um, so next step will be, we'll have to free this handbrake system up, that's, that's locked up, we're going to free up the reverse lockout um, so we can get in reverse, plus we'll free up this, the rest of the linkage, it is a bit stiff. Um, and we'll, yeah, we 
we probably we'll probably have to get it all out in the bench, I'd say, and then free it all up and get it all back in. But yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah, should be good. Happy with that. Happy, yeah, really good. Yep. Jesse is making steady progress, punching the rivets out of these decks and getting the hinges ready. And Daryl has got the idler wheel and bearings cleaned up beautifully. We talk a lot about German engineering on this channel, but I have to say, after seeing the beautiful condition of the mechanical parts of this tank, the industrial power and precision of the US is really on display here. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. Until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.